Rock This Universe Actors Edition. I am your host, Chantal Herman, and this is the official podcast for saactors.rockthisuniverse.com, the only website dedicated to the inspiration and education of the professional actor in South Africa. So hey, it's 2018, and time to go deeper into the actor's life and how we navigate challenges and our creative setbacks and you know even negativity and depression in the pursuit of excellence in our craft. Yeah, I've decided that 2018 is going to be the time for us to really start figuring out how to collaborate with each other so that that we can really grow uh, a community uh, with each other, with the uh, professional South African actors in our our group. You know, we don't talk to each other enough, I don't think. So let 2018 be the year for collaboration and connection and empowering because lots of stuff is going down this year. Yeah, but I have a fantastic guest today. Her name is Candice Bernstein and she is the founder and editor of Serafina Magazine, which she started in 2016. She is an actress and her Serafina Magazine website has featured over 150 women drawing readers from over 90 countries. Ooh, that's nice. A Cape Townian by birth, she moved to New York City to study at the William H. Macy and David Mamet to the Atlantic Acting School. Uh, she returned to South Africa in 2015 with the hope of contributing to the local arts industry in a meaningful way and struck gold, definitely I'd say, with the idea of taking a peek into the lives and careers of both established and upcoming women in our local arts industries. So without further ado, welcome Candice Bernstein. Hi, thank you for having me. <laughs> oh, it's awesome to have you. Yeah, I met you, when was it? Was it? Uh, last no, but two years ago now, when when you just started with Serafina magazine, right? Yes, and this was before you even started rehearsals for Priscilla, so it was at least a year and a half ago. Yes, yes, that is exactly it. My gosh, and at that point, I think you had established one hell of a posting routine, and I remember being absolutely gobsmacked at the output that you essentially setting out for yourself and expecting from yourself um are you still able to sustain it (laughs) well yes and no so originally Serafina was two posts a week on Tuesdays and Thursdays and so that was about eight posts a month and then um last year I went to the states for three months Mm -hmm. and I realized it wouldn't be possible to stockpile that many interviews So I scaled down to one a week, um, every Wednesday at 10 a.m. And even when I was in the States with the crazy time difference, I was up at 4 a.m. every Wednesday, making sure the post went up and that everything was fine. Yowzers. So tell me what brought you to creating this this website? I mean, there were were so many things. Um, The main thing is probably because I stumbled upon a website that's quite similar, which Mm -hmm. is called The Interval, and that's a New York City-based publication that celebrates women in theater. And I just thought it would be really cool if we had some sort of similar resource in South Africa. And that was kind of just one of many things that kick-started it. Mm. So would you say that Serafina magazine is still more Cape Town-based, or are you getting around and, and meeting more people in South Africa? Yeah, I mean, it is Cape Town based, obviously, because that's where I live. Um, last year, I did come up to Joburg for a little while and I did a couple of interviews. And actually, tomorrow, I have an interview that is for a Joburg company. But Ooh. yeah, so I'll leave <laughs> up to everyone's imagination. Um, so obviously, the goal is to be fully South African and be able to maybe have a Serafina representative in each of the different cities. Um, but that's more of a long-term goal. So hopefully there's another Joburg trip in my future. I mean, one day we can make it more fully South African. Yeah, oh, that's amazing. Um, but I think, I think you know, as far as actors are concerned, I know a lot of us, we're very creative people. So we want to create other things that can either sustain us in a different way or, you know, just kind of have another place for us to to air our creativity and and connect with people on a different on another level Um, and a lot of the time uh, it's a website or it's a blog but can you give us a little bit of insight as to what it takes for you to be able to create say one post for Serafina magazine 
Mm. Well, most of the time it starts out with whoever is going to be interviewed. That's usually either arranged through a publicist or, you know, someone I reach out to directly. And then we end up sitting down and we chat. Usually it's a conversation that lasts anywhere from, you know, 20 minutes to some of them have lasted two hours. And then I have a photographer accompanying me who snaps away candidly while we're in discussion. Uh -huh. but once that conversation has taken place, I transcribe the audio of the conversation into a post. And then I start editing it and shaping it into the interview that you end up seeing on the on the platform. Mm -hmm. And how long does that take? I mean, it depends how, <laughs> how you know, if I'm procrastinating or not. I've been quite good in 2018 of actually getting home immediately after, a, you know, an interview or a conversation and transcribing it straight away. If I do that, then I'm good. I don't, I mean, I work on it when, when I feel like I want to. If I get tired, that's obviously when mistakes happen. So I usually, mm. you know, will work on something and then step away from it. Um, but usually one post will have my attention for that full week until yeah. it goes up. For a full week. And you were posting twice a week in 2017. <laughs> yeah, from, yeah, 2016 to 2017. I don't know how I managed to do it. Honestly, I <laughs> remember in, in the first month of Serafina, I had to have my wisdom teeth removed and they were wheeling me into surgery and I was still like, you know, editing a post, <laughs> pressing send and they had to pry my phone out of my hand, <laughs> take me in. And I was like, just let me post it. <laughs> well, that's a hell of a dedication, that's for sure. <laughs> a little bit too much. But tell me, what kind of um, return have you been seeing as far as, you know, putting the website out there and all these posts and showcasing all these women? What kind of feedback do you get? Um, yeah, what are, the, what are the perks of this, of this kind of blogging? Yeah. Um, so, obviously, the, you know, biggest perk is that I get to have an incredible conversation with someone who I normally wouldn't be chatting with. And I think they are more willing to engage because they realize that I'm not a journalist. I don't really define myself as that. I'm just somebody who has a lot of questions and who happens to, you know, sort of be in the performing arts industry as well. So that would be the first perk. I also just think it's been able to give women a space where they feel like they can say things that they wouldn't normally be able to say in fear of, you know, other people's opinions or judgments or even, you know, uh, repercussions career-wise you know often women are told to keep things very you know just sort of packaged and simple and very nice <laughs> uh, but I have recently kind of seen that a lot of questions that be, are being asked to women in our industry have started to change there seems to be a little bit more respect towards the people that are being interviewed and towards their opinion and so I, I don't know and if that's just because of Serafino, if it's because of the way, you know, the world is kind of unfolding at the moment. Mm. But I just think it it hasn't done any, you know, negative negativity, should I say, to our to our industry. Yeah. Do do you find that there's kind of an underlying commonality in the challenges that women have uh, in specifically the South African industry? I mean, yes and no. There are, you know, universal challenges that we all face, mm. um, but then each woman has their own unique journey. And, uh, you know, when I say woman or women, we also need to bear in mind that there are different kinds of women or non-binary, mm. you know, members of our society or transgendered or, you know, um, I think we do have to just be respectful of the fact that everyone has a completely different journey. Mm, okay. Well, I mean, you you've been able to showcase quite a few of the the players in 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 our industry, and not only actors, but you've got directors here. I'm just checking your Instagram. <laughs> uh, directors. You've also got people working in the the sound design of of certain shows, and um, so have you decided to kind of expand and, and incorporate all these women who are adding to to the industry in that way? So. Originally, Serafina was, and it still is, the tagline is celebrating South African women in the arts, mm. which, you know, is the arts, uh, performing arts, 
you know, visual arts, music, all those kind of things. But because I am in, you know, I'm, I find it very hard to kind of refer to myself as an actress at the moment, which is why I have that kind of hesitation when defining myself. Um, but because I kind of come from that world and I'm more inclined to theater, I've kind of gotten stuck into that. And I mean, very easily. So there's so many incredible women in the theater industry who, you know, have just allowed me to have access to them. Yeah. It is my goal for the rest of the year to kind of figure out how to still continue to incorporate the other art forms. Mm. So then where are you, I suppose, in, in your career? Because you say that sometimes you, you hesitate to call yourself an actor now. Is it purely because you've been working so hard on the website that it's kind of shifted your focus? Or um, is there something kind of changing inside of you that, that, that you haven't, or at least that you've decided to explore? Gosh, I mean, it's it's such a it's such a long story and one that, you know, I feel like is continuous. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I think because it's been a very difficult journey so far and I'm still relatively at the beginning of my career. Mm. So I'm at that point where I'm thinking, do I stay? Is it worth staying and fighting for this thing that I love so much? Or mm. do I leave now and explore other opportunities? And I guess that's the very you know simple way to phrase things. But I've had a lot of really great conversations with um performers and often when I speak to the veteran performers in our industry or the doyens I always very selfishly ask them if they ever had a moment of wanting to quit the industry mm. most of the time they say yes um, and they discuss that but yeah. I very rarely ask them why they decided to stay so I think that's a question that I'm going to start incorporating yes, in future so. yeah. because of my but yeah <laughs> No, I can totally understand that. What is what is one of the most poignant answers you've had from the doyens, as you call them? Oh gosh, one of the most poignant ones. It's so it's so hard to to kind of pick and choose. It's like Sophie's choice because mm. I I really do end up falling in love with every woman that I interview, and I kind of I've coined the term Sarah Mama. So I become very protective over them. And once they have featured on the platform, you know, I will always come to their defense should they need it and should they need the support of this platform. Um, but I think the most poignant thing is that they are all still very real people with real insecurities. And that doesn't go away even when you've done 100 productions and won, you know, tons of awards. At the end of the day, they still have, you know, the same insecurities and fears that we do at the beginning of our careers. Hmm. Is that is that a daunting thing or is it an inspiring thing? <laughs> it's a bit of both. <laughs> I mean, I did speak to one recently who told me that, you know, eventually things get easier, but, and to quote her, but I'll leave her a name out of it. She said, at the end of the day, we're still people who very much want people to clap for us and tell us that we've done a good job. Hmm. I love that. And what would you say, like, as far as um, Serafina magazine is concerned, like, what is, I guess, what is the gift that Serafina has been created to give to people? I think it just gives people the opportunity to get to know the people behind the artist. Hmm. Um, you know, I think you often walk into a show for example and you get to see a performer on stage and I know for me I would go and google them afterwards to kind of you know get as much information about them as possible and I couldn't really ever find anything other than press releases mm. so I think this is you know it's a, it's a great resource where you can see you know the things that inspire them and what they're kind of working up against and um yeah I just, someone recently actually said to me, it's a great resource. And I'd never thought of that before uh -huh. uh, in terms of it being a resource. But I often find myself doing my own research on Serafina because the things that I'm trying to look up in regards to other people are not easily found online. Yeah, because it's usually only the stuff that's there for publicity for the shows that they're doing or what they've put up there via the agents and... No, absolutely. Gosh. 
I think that that is that is awesome because I just realized now that because the um, having a website is essentially you know if you keep renewing it, <laughs> um, the the material on there has the you know the capacity to pretty much be there forever. So it, it, if you had to carry this on, it would literally be this fantastic lexicon of our South African female uh, contributors to the industry. That is just that's freaking awesome. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, yes, like I like said, it's once it's there, I mean, hopefully it'll be there forever. Mm. There are a few posts, however, from the beginning that I do need to go back and edit again because mm -hmm. I think I've learned a lot in terms of editing and spelling, yeah. but that's a work in progress. Um, so <laughs> there's some interviews from the very beginning that I actually cannot look back on because I'm just filled with so much embarrassment just in terms of myself, <laughs> not women. Yeah, yeah. It's there. It's there. You can find them. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. <laughs> but that, Candace, I'm assuming that um, an endeavor like this is is it costs you quite a bit of money to do. I mean, I I know having my website as well and having the group that you know, there's, it, if not only just your time that it takes up, you're kind of piling in money as you go, <laughs> right? So how do you actually keep um, a website like Serafina magazine uh, afloat? So it obviously is uh, self-funded. I was approached by various organizations uh, sort of in the beginning who wanted to advertise on the website. Mm. And I turned them down because Serafina is a neutral space. Mm. So it's it's one of the reasons why I never give my opinion about something that I've seen, because it'll look like an endorsement from Serafina mm. and Serafina, you know, or a critique from Serafina. But Serafina magazine aims to promote women and celebrate them and kind of build them up. Yeah. So you don't so, you don't do reviews of plays and things. No, I yes. leave that to the very capable professional. <laughs> um so yeah, so that that was important to me. It just didn't feel right. So for the first year, it was entirely funded by by me. Um, and then last year, when we celebrated the first birthday, Serafina's first birthday, with a, um, a a reading, I asked people to attend and give a donation, and all of that went towards ensuring you know the longevity of Serafina, and that was that was a great fundraiser, and I'm very grateful for the turnout that we had. Mm -hmm. And now implementing Serafina Magazine Live means that there is, you know, contributions coming in from people who do want to give. So um, I'm hoping to take that and kind of funnel it into the website and what it can do. Yeah. So what is Serafina Live? Well, thank you for asking. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> So Serafina Magazine Live, it's a, a new kind of element to this platform. Mm -hmm. It's a bi-monthly talkback series, and it's inspired by the Hollywood Reporter's Roundtable discussion. So I don't uh, know if you've seen I Oscar. have. Yeah, I absolutely love them. <laughs> I do too, and I, I think they're great. I, I always wanted to have that element of Serafina. Um, and when I started this, a friend of mine at one point kind of pulled me aside and went, okay, one idea at a time, build <laughs> audience, and then you can bring in the new elements. Yeah. It, after the first year, it finally felt right to do. It originally was going to be in November of last year, but I kind of just like felt very overwhelmed by the whole thing. So mm. it eventually kicked off in January with our first one, which centered around the young theater makers. We had a panel of three women, and the next one is taking place on Monday, the 12th of March. Okay, that's awesome. And yeah. who who's coming to it? I mean, how do you actually structure it? Are the actors that you have who are speaking about what? Yeah, so um, each panel is going to be themed. So the first one was the young theater makers, and this mm -hmm. one is the doyens. So it's going to center around three kind of very revered um, theater actresses. Um, I'm hoping eventually we do a doyens, a musical version mm -hmm. one day of those great women who have, you know, kind of treaded the boards and sung their hearts out. Yeah. Um, so yeah, this one will feature Sandra Prinsloo, Jennifer Stain, and this is kind of breaking news to you. Um, unfortunately, because they are doyens and they do have, you know, incredibly demanding um, 
careers and schedules. Yeah. Uh, De Denise Newman can no longer join us, but she has been replaced by the wonderful Susan Danford, who was actually the first woman I ever interviewed for Serafina. Oh, hey, look at that, full circle. <laughs> Very, yeah, I had to, her interview was one of the ones that I had to revisit when I was preparing now for this upcoming event, and yeah. I just wanted to die. <laughs> But at least yeah. it should be an inspiration in terms of how far you've come. <laughs> I mean, it's two parts. I think it's 10,000 words total. Wow. And I literally transcribed everything. Yeah. So there was one point where I literally wrote laughs. And I'm like, Candace. <laughs> <laughs> so you wrote a thesis. <laughs> It was. It really was a thesis. And we actually joke in that interview about how long the interview is. Yes. <laughs> Gosh, that's amazing. And um, so it, it's happening on Saturday. Um, I, on when? Monday the 12th. Oh, sorry, on Monday the 12th. Sorry, it's happening on Monday the 12th. And um, I assume that there is an entrance fee? Yes. So it is taking place at the Alexander Bar. Okay. Uh, they have graciously decided, well, not decided, they've allowed us <laughs> to host the second one there. So if you book online through alexanderbar.coza, I think it is, it's 90 Rand. And if you pay at the door, it's 100 Rand. Mm. And all of the funds raised go towards Serafina magazine and its future. Fantastic. That is awesome. So um, what would you say is, well, what's your vision for Serafina and its future? There's so many things that I want for this publication. But mm. the main thing that has always been kind of sitting in the back of my mind is that eventually I want Serafina magazine to exist without me. So I would like it to almost be a resource that people can contribute to on their own. Yeah. Um, and I just, I think eventually it might, well, it almost has outgrown, you know, what I can do in terms of what this is. A lot of people, you know, do refer to me as a journalist and I'm not that. I yeah. don't come from a journalistic background. I have a lot of respect towards journalists and I think what they do is incredible and I could never, you know, dare to kind of tread on their territory. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's something that's ever evolving. Mm -hmm. And so it's how do you learn to grow with that and kind of pick up new skills while that is still kind of snowballing yeah yeah and I'd say like lastly just a, a question that I'm particularly interested in because you know I've, I've got the the rock this universe actors etc and um what do you feel as far as actors in South Africa are you sensing a, a change in wanting to collaborate more with each other, in trying to create a community, in, in wanting to learn more about each other? What are you finding? Well, the final question of every Serafina interview is who are some South African women in the arts that inspire you? Mm. I love that question, but I mostly love it because a lot of the times I can say to someone, oh, do you know this person named you as an inspiring woman? And it's someone who they've probably never had a conversation with before or they have had conversations with, but they didn't realize. Mm, so yeah. I think if we just speak to one another and, you know, really just put our cards down and turn to someone and say, I really like your work and I would love to work with you. I think the possibilities are endless. We just have to start initiating those conversations and kind of leave the ego behind and um, realize that it's OK sometimes to be a fangirl. Now, be, be respectful in the way you go about it, but let those people know that their work means a lot to you and that you would like to collaborate with them. Mm, fantastic. Gosh. And with that, we've come to the end of the interview. <laughs> Thanks so much for joining me, Candice. It's been wonderful having you and just chatting about this, this wonderful idea that you've decided to jump onto and just keep rolling with because a lot of the time, you know, the gas just <laughs> runs out. <laughs> So I say kudos to you for actually keeping keeping it all going. And thank you for providing us with this um, resource that we now have of the most phenomenal um, female actors and, and practitioners in, in South Africa. Thanks so much to you, really. No, thank you. Thank you for having me. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, just before we go, make sure, what are your um, Facebook handles and social media handles so everybody can find you? Yes, so I'm pretty sure it, we're across the board. We're you know 
whatever, the www.facebook, Instagram, whatever, um, slash Serafina Magazine, but on Twitter, we're Serafina Mag. Okay. Because it's too long. <laughs> but us into Google and we're there. Okay, fantastic, great stuff. And yeah, I'm pretty sure that you'll be able to see a lot more. Um, Candice usually posts her new posts from Serafina Magazine into the group and also the SA Actors Rock This Universe page as well. And yeah, be sure to click on a link and read up on our fantastic female actors. And yeah, thank you so much for joining us and stay tuned for another Rock This Universe Actors Edition episode. Thanks for joining us, guys. Bye.